Hi everyone, we're doing the last of our series on Paul and John's revelation for the time being, and this is episode five. And we're gonna ask two questions. They're kind of the same question, but kind of framed a little bit differently. One, does Jesus in Revelation 2 verse 24 quote from Paul's letter of 1 Corinthians 2.10 about the deep things of God to mock him, saying it means instead the deep things of Satan? Or two, a sub question is, does Jesus quote Jezebel quoting Paul as she used Paul's epistle to convince the people of Thyatira to meet sacrifice titles. So it's sort of, are we to understand that this is, uh, Jezebel is a symbol for Paul. And let's compare the two passages very quickly. 1 Corinthians 2.10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things, bate of God. That bate is the Greek word. And in Revelation 2.24, same words going to appear. I say to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching, who haven't known the deep things, the bate of Satan, as they say, I do not put any other burden on you. Let's see how commentary looks at it. So I'm not going to say anything. Uh, the IVP, the InterVarsity Press, New Testament commentary. What I'll just synopsize quickly what they're going to say is Jezebel is speaking Paul's words and Jesus is mocking Jezebel for using that to teach you can eat meat sacrifice idols. But the underlying premise of this whole passage in Revelation 2 is Jesus is, is talking about Paul's doctrine of eating meat sacrifice idols and the false apostle in the same identical, I mean, we're talking only a few verses separate that and this. So let's go read it. Jezebel may even have, this is an uh, InterVarsity Press commenting on um, uh, verse 24 of chapter 2 of Revelation. Jezebel may even have quoted Paul to the effect that God has revealed to it, it to us by his spirit. And the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, 1 Corinthians 2.10. Possibly, with Paul's statement in view, the risen Jesus announces not just to Thyatira, but to all churches, that I will repay each of you according to your deeds, and the word is works in Greek, same as Paul uses about works negatively, adding that the deep things of such groups as this are not the profound truths of God, but the deep secrets of Satan himself. In other words, mocking it is not really truly what they say it is, or Paul said it was, deep things of God, rather it's the deep things of Satan. So Jesus is quoting Paul, that's pretty obvious in what way is it through uh, just directly were to recognize that because that's a that's an easy clue to spot or are we supposed to identify him with Jezebel it really doesn't matter he's the one teaching this false doctrine and Jesus is letting us know he has uh, horrific uh, uh, messages to to us about this completely so whatever it is it's not not good and we're to listen to our Lord Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Ernest Renan again. You've seen him in the past. Uh, he is a uh, French writer. He uh, was an independent theologian. He was going to become a Catholic order, go into Catholic orders, but he didn't. And he lived, uh, I think, but he learned Hebrew, and I think he uh, taught in a boys' school. And he was basically an independent theologian, and and very well uh, recognized as a good writer in history of the church. And he's a defender of Paul in this context, as we'll see. Uh, but in other contexts, he'll say, you know, I have to admit, you know, Jesus must come first. And, you know, Paul was a hidden rock. So he has uh, progression as he got forward. But this is this is him early on. This is his defense of Paul here. Paul, from this moment, was for a section of the church, one of the most dangerous of heretics, a false apostle, Revelation 2.2, a new Balaam, Revelation 2.14, a Ze Jezebel, his gospel was a false gospel, his visions, which he calls depths of God, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 2.10, they qualified as the depths of Satan, Revelation 2.24, his churches, they named the synagogues of Satan, that's Revelation 2.9 and 3.9, in spite of Paul, they proclaim boldly that the twelve are the foundation of the church of Christ, Revelation 21.14. So he's put it all together and said, these are all aimed to limit and control and put Paul in his place by those who are observant. But at this time, 1869, he's vehemently opposed to, to this book because he believes uh, Apostle John and the, the other apostles were 
uh, well, here it is. The second and third chapters of the Apocalypse are a cry of hatred against Paul and his friends. I mean, that says it as bluntly as you can. In the 1869 edition of his work at page 301, he expresses that the uh, apostles were just full of all kinds of hatred. So to just show you what, what a person who wants to defend Paul will stoop to, to attack the apostles as just venomous hate. So here is what he basically, this is, it's so long and vituperative and filled, filled with hate. I just have to call out those things that are relevant. Renan describes the anti-Paul writings throughout the New Testament and he's not just talking about um, Revelation. He says Jude's the same thing, James the same thing. These are all written to undermine Paul, basically, he says. Renan describes the anti-Paul writings that were out in the New Testament, veiled though they were by the early church as, as they truly represent cries of hatred, insult, calumny, and envy, he says. He calls James the just and the apostles who were concerned about Paul's possible, quote, apostasy against Moses, the reflection of shallow minds. That's at page 301. James supposedly obliged Paul to hypocrisy. This is in Acts 21. Hypocrisy to observe the Nazarite vow in Acts 21. To prove Paul was obeying Moses still, forcing Paul to give pledges to the littleness of mind. So he has no respect for the apostles seeking to uphold God's law, that Jesus is speaking in the book of Revelation. He's denigrating all of that. And when I mentioned this in the very first episode, I think it was, I tried to tell you that this is going to be your temptation. You're, you, Jesus is giving you a test. Revelation 13, no, Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10 tells us God allows false prophets to test us. This is why Jesus is not using Paul's name. You have to figure it out. You have to be logical, spiritual, pray about it, and see, do you agree with Renan that it's uh, not that it's filled with hate, but you can see who Jesus is talking about. Even the IVP said it appears to be Jesus is quoting Paul through Jezebel. They, that, that's how they interpreted it. You can see it for yourself and to, on top of everything else we've shown you. But anyway, this is the warning I give you again because you may be tempted to go the way of Ron and say, oh, this is just a book of hatred. But listen to the curse that's over you if you do that. And I don't think there's a mistake. Jesus meant you to, to hear this. Revelation 22, 18 to 19. I testify to everyone who hears what? The Bible? No, the prophetic words of this book. This is often distorted and you're told this is closed canon. No, he's talking about the prophetic words of this book. If anyone adds them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away what, what, from what book? From the words of this prophetic book, which is the book of Revelation, God will take away his share of the tree of life and the, and the Holy, Spirit, Holy City written in this book. So the answer is not to deny the validity of the book of Revelation, go down this path to a curse. Read what Jesus is saying, study and test Paul, and I think the conclusion will be your own, and out of your own uh, understanding by studying and praying and, and doing this. I'm not telling you what you have to do, I'm, I'm, uh, though I'm giving you all the information that you can make the decision of applying the test for apostasy against Paul. So let's take a quick look. Uh, again, of the verse at issue, Paul in 1 Corinthians 2.10 had written that God has revealed it to us, his spirit, and the spirit searches all things, even the depths, bate, of God. I actually think if you read the whole context, there's something strange going on in this passage. Paul is talking about wisdom and mystery and hidden wisdom. That's exactly like the Gnostics, a her her heretical group that also believed in, you know, there's no law and, and came to believe that God, Yahweh, is really a God living in the Sheol and, and Jesus has a different God. And, uh, yeah. But listen to this. I think Jesus picked this out to, to even paint the picture. Look at the context of this, these words. It sounds good, but it really isn't. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You should read that verse in the original Isaiah. It doesn't mean what he's saying, but... We, I'll move on. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So this is somebody trying to make out like there was a mystery. I've discovered this mystery. I'm inspired to bring you a mystery that was hidden before the ages. So, like even Jesus didn't apparently know it. 
and that's actually, uh, I, I could put some people on here on video. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it maybe in another episode. But they, they actually teach this. Was, Paul had a right to bring a mystery that even Jesus didn't know about. So uh, I think Jesus was was uh, looking at the Nazism of this, the heresy inherent in just having somebody believe that God wasn't revealing himself, wasn't predicting what the, what's going on. Paul was like a whole new thing. This is not prophesied anywhere. There was going to be a new testament where god would write his law or torah on our heart he didn't say i'm going to bring you a new law that you know i'm going to repl get rid of the old one and here, here's a new one so he is saying i have learned something from god that's a mystery and that's exactly the appeal of narcissism and what is it it's the they want to have the tree of knowledge that satan offered in, in the garden of eden so it's like this temptation oh there's something you know, if I study Paul, I'm going to find some secrets out, some hidden mysteries, and I'll be part of the club. Jesus wants you to proclaim his gospel, his gospel of the kingdom. It's not it's not a secret in that way. Okay. Okay, uh, now we're going to take a look at Jesus' more fuller context where he made that quote about deep things of Satan. And by the way, it's in red uh, at verse 24 on this screen. And uh, we're going to quote and see... Uh, what we can notice, I want you to notice how the word works. Remember the big issue for Paul is, you know, salvation doesn't include works. And and uh, most people conclude that you don't even have to repent of sin. You know, Abraham was saved in an ungodly state, unrepentant. That's what Paul says, by virtue of faith alone. And that's all we need. And we're going to heaven for that. That's what most people teach. He says, write to the angel of the church in Thyatira. Jesus says, the Son of God, the one whose eyes are like a fiery flame and whose feet are like fine bronze, says, I know your works, your love, faithfulness, service, and endurance. Your last works are greater than the first, but I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and deceives my servants to eat meat sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to repent. I am the one who examines minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you according to your works. By the way, he says that in the Gospels, too. Uh, yeah, he uses the word praxis. You know, you'll be repaid or... Uh, yeah, you'll be repaid according to your praxis. Sin syn synonymous. I say to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching, who haven't known the deep things of Satan, as they say, I do not put any other burden on you, but hold on to what you have until I come. The one who is victorious and keeps my works to the end, I will give him authority over the nations. So uh, unless you think Jezebel's going to heaven, unless you think the the uh, Jesus is saying they don't have to repent of their their uh, uh, f falling backwards here because of her teaching, um, I don't know what to tell you, but this doesn't sound like Jesus is encouraging them to think that they can stay where they are and and they're uh, only going to lose rewards in heaven. But he's promising if you if you keep my works, you'll have rewards in heaven. If you don't keep them, are you going to heaven anyway with all these bad behaviors that you don't repent of? And Jesus makes a point. He says, I gave her time to repent and she still hasn't. So he's really telling the story is that uh, this isn't going to last forever for her. So anyway, uh, word to the wise. Uh, pray about it as you may, as you may in your uh, uh, worship time and your prayer time and your Bible reading time. Okay, so uh, here I'm just going to leave it back up on the screen for a second. So these are the two passages that you can directly compare. What is Jesus saying? He's saying that her teachings, she might be saying they're the deep things of God, but you know, he he's going to say they're they're really the deep things of Satan. So uh, anyway, I think that's uh, uh, you know where you can make a comparison. Why would he be quoting Paul in the negative, basically turning it around. So they, they keep saying they're teaching the deep things of God, but he's saying what they really mean is the deep things of Satan. You know, teaching people that you meet sacrifice to idols is on, primarily on his list. Okay, so I'm just going to recap. And uh, Paul is the obvious target, more than ever before, of Jesus' criticism of 68 AD this third time. Renan found several more. As you saw, he was talking about other verses that I haven't even gone over. The Synagogue of Satan passage, uh, just several others. 
Uh, okay, so Jesus rejects Paul's claims. Number one, Jesus rejects Paul's claims in 1 Corinthians 8, verses 14 to 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 19 to 29, and also see Romans 14, verses 1 to 23, that eating uh, idle meat is permissible. Jesus condemns it in no uncertain terms, no exceptions, no allowances, just don't do it. Two, this compounds what Jesus said in Revelation 2.2, 2, that the Ephesian church correctly expelled false apostles in Revelation 2.2 2, by finding they were false. They, were not, they said they were apostles, but they were not, meaning they were not one of the 12. That's the whole point of, you know, how can you be a true apostle or not, is whether you are one of the 12, which, given Paul's letters to Timothy and Corinthians about being rejected by all in Asia after trial, putting on his first defense, and all this other kind of stuff he talks about in Timothy, well, you know, Paul maybe didn't realize his letters would be, uh, uh, Jesus could then say something from uh, in heaven to John, John would record it and would expose what happened forever in that trial, and that's what Jesus did. And three, Jesus in the Thyatira message rejects Paul's wisdom and his doctrine as from the deep things of Satan. Revelation 2.24 saying Paul's message of eating meat, sacrifice to idols, is not from the deep things of God. So I hope everybody that will help you. And uh, there's just one more issue that most people have. So let me talk about that. The most often response I get is, why did Jesus not simply say Paul's name? And there are two reasons or two ex two statements I want to get uh, put out there for you to think about. In Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10, God expects us to take, when a person comes along and say, I'm a new prophet, you're supposed to uh, test him, confirm him, that he doesn't say anything inconsistent with any prophet who came before. That's actually the test in Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10. So if somebody comes along and says, all of that law was set aside, it doesn't exist anymore is by definition an apostate that's what it that's exactly what this passage of 13 1 to 10 says so god's progressive revelation never can contradict the prior rev, uh, revelation it has to always fulfill it but that doesn't mean it goes away so if somebody who uh, fulfills the prophecies of messiah doesn't mean the law is gone because somebody fulfilled the prophecy no it means if jesus ever spoke anything contrary to God's law, he would be a false prophet, right? By definition of, thir of Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10. So you need to read that. The word apostasy appears in the Greek edition of 13, verse 10. And that's particularly why it's called the uh, the uh, law of the apostates, just so you know where, where this stuff comes from. So that's why he wouldn't name him. It's too easy. Jesus comes and says, hey, don't listen to Paul. It, that's not the way it works. It's to test you whether you love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. And that verse that you, Jesus said was the most important commandment in the world, in, in the whole Bible. Guess where it is? <laughs> it's in Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10. The most important verse is tested by what? By false prophets who come and God says they try to seduce you. But you can prove to me that you love me with your whole heart, mind, and soul by recognizing them and then expelling them from your community. Okay. But the other thing is, Jesus does actually use Paul's name in a prophecy. And it's not that secret. It's not that hard to see. And we, we want to point this out to you. So, so Paul's name is actually Poxalilis, okay? And his name is a contraction of that. So in Latin, we have the double, what we call a double diminutive term. So the word Pocus is the root word of Poxalilis. And then you want to make it, you know, lesser, it would be lesser, you go poxilis, and, and then you could do poxililis to mean the least. And that's exactly what Paul's name is, because he says, I was the least of the apostles. And Augustine recognized in the 300s, he's playing on the Latin meaning of his name, meaning poxilis. So it's very easy for a Latin speaker to see it. But it went by apparently everybody else until the 1800s. I'm not the first one to figure this out, so don't don't think I did. But I, I do know Latin enough to do research and make sure I found the exact word. A lot of scholars thought it was poxilis or something. It's poxililis, not poxilis, which is lesser. This is least. Anyway, the point is this. Jesus does tell us his name right there. And I have a whole video on that. So you look it up. See at the bottom there in the box, Jesus on the law, Matthew 5.17, has prophecy of Paul as least man. That's what you want to look at to see. And that will give you maybe further confirmation to make the decision in your life that you need to just follow Jesus and you're not doing anything wrong 
And even though there's really nice passages of Paul, sweet poetical stuff, verses we all like, you know, I can do all things through God who strengthens me, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It was changed later to that, by the way. Is Those are nice verses. Well, I agree. But it doesn't mean you hold on to someone who's an apostate from God because that, that, that shows you don't love God. You just love Paul. And, and oh, you don't want to go, you don't want to beat the pearly gates telling God, I, I love Paul. I thought he was from you. He's going to say, you heard that, you heard that video. You actually sh should have seen this through your whole Christian life. And you then heard this video and you, you, you were challenged. Did you do the test? And these tests aren't hard. I've given you the videos. You can look it up. And I always put the books on the screen. I put links and I tell you how to look it up on books.google.com. I mean, they're all there. I thought it, we did the, uh, today, the, uh, International Varsity Press. Go to Bible Gateway. Look up, look up the IVP commentary. See, they're talking about Paul being quoted by Jesus in, in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2. So it's not that hard. Anyway, I pray, everybody, that this was a blessing to you. I'm going to move on to other topics, I think, for the moment. But uh, I think uh, this uh, was... It was uh, I learned a lot doing this, by the way. It's, it's a process, even as I go. So I... I, I praise God for uh, giving me time to do this, and uh, I hope it will ha help your life in Christ. All right, take care. God bless.